Is it proper to say, oh yes, is it proper to say that Jesus was indifferent to politics? In one sentence. Uh, sorry. Um, was, I, I, I don't think Jesus was a party man, thank you. But I don't, I, don't, I don't think you can say that the message he was preaching was indifferent. I mean, I think his message was so countercultural and so revolutionary in what, in, in, when, you know, when he is saying, give to what is Caesar is Caesar and give to God what is God. I mean, that's a political statement. Um, so I don't think, I, I guess the answer would be no. How do you deal with abortion and um, gay marriage and those kind of issues? I don't. Uh, you, when you say how do I deal with it, you mean personally? Preaching, preaching sorry. Oh, yeah. uh, in preaching and those sorts of things. Uh, carefully, I mean, there, there, there are issues that are going to definitely divide. I, I, don't, I don't think you ever want the pulpit to be the bully pulpit for a couple key issues. I think whatever, anytime you pick a controversial topic like that, you've got to make, you really have to make sure that you've, you've earned the right, in a sense, to be able to, 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 to speak on it in a way that it that brings it into the context of the larger the larger whole. And I think that's, that's really, really important. So like when, the, when a text comes on homosexuality or, um, or sanctity of life issues, um, do you, give an example how you would nuance, like in preaching, like you're going you're gonna to speak against homosexuality. Just take two minutes and nuance it. Yeah. You need a lot more than two, two minutes to nuance it. Um, I, I think what you have to do is be able to create the context first that, that God loves all people, uh, that, he's not, that he's not a hater of, of, of people, and that, that, that the church isn't to hate, hate people. Um, it, it, but that in that love, so when we talk about how God has initially created us in male and female, and, and then we become cracked icons, there's all kinds of idols that we seek. And there's all kinds of things that we seek that, are, are, that, that aren't, aren't the best thing for us. And I think homosexuality is one of those things. And so part of the restoration process, the gospel process, is realizing that as we get back to the image of God, what is it that's best for the way that he has, he has created us? And that's whether it's homosexuality or any other idol that's out there. And, and I, so that, that's how, I, that's how I, I fit it in. And whenever we lose the worship of God, this is Romans 1, when we lose the ability to, to, to worship God correctly, we are going to gravitate towards other, other things that are, are not God's ideals for us. Um, how should practically churches participate in the renewal of cities? Like, what are some practicals? Well, you know, there's a couple dangers that you spend so much time working in on social, the social justice issues that the church doesn't do the institutional part, um, and that, that's a danger. I don't think the church is to become a, a social action committee in order to do that because there's so much other stuff that the church is called to do, but where it's really called is to train believers to go out and do that. I don't think it's really called to do it all themselves. Uh, we're really called to train our people to band together, either individually or in groups. And, and this is the way it was done in the past. There would be a group of people who had the ability to go start a hospital. They would go start a hospital. It may be form, you know, in, linked to the church, but it wasn't necessarily the clergy that was doing it. It was the people who were inspired within the church to go do that. And they would often do it in groups. So I would encourage you to link people together. Not, don't just train one lawyer. Train all the lawyers and get them to work and think together. Don't train one doctor or one teacher or or, or, you know, that sort of thing. Get them working in associations together. So what would you say to your church member who said, okay, I'm going to go and help this hospital, this nonprofit, this social justice thing, um, and that is, my, that is my ministry, and I don't have time to do church stuff? Yeah, I would say, I would say they, there's two dangers we make. We keep people so busy in church stuff that they have no time to be salt and light, to be shalom makers out in the world. You've got to find ways to free them up to have more time to be missional. But at the same time, the danger is to say that you no longer have any responsibility. So they've got to find ways to continue to be involved in the institutional part of the church without, without taking it away. But there also may be seasons where somebody is going through something where they are hyper-involved in a program like at a hospital. And the church needs to be able to say, for now, that's good. If you can 
pass out bulletins on Sunday to make sure you're still involved or, or, or stay in your community group, that's fine. But give them the freedom to do that at that stage, because then there'll be other stages where they're, they're more involved in, the, in the, the institutional part. Do you feel like having um, professional preachers inhibits training their ability to train secret agents to be sh shalom spreaders? Uh, professional preachers, does it inhibit that? No, I, I don't think it does. Uh, I mean, and I'm not, I guess I don't understand the gist of the, the full gist. I mean, you're still calling people in their professions to go out and, and, to, and, and to do what they're called to do. Uh, whether, so whether you're a lay pastor or an ordained guy on staff, I think we can both do that. So we got a guy that's moving to L.A. You should talk to Jim before you leave, by the way. That's where he is near. Um, and he's, he's basically saying, I'm going to plan a, in, a, in a very liberal area. Um, how do I, how does he, what are some of the practicals of when you're planting in a, in a liberal yeah, area? Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming he means politically. Politically liberal. Yeah, that, well, that's L.A. I mean, um, that would be L.A. Uh, well, I mean, I, you know, you're going ha to have to find ways to, to, uh, to connect with them on issues that are important. And I think the gospel has great, I mean, you know, Keller's another great example of that because that's really what he's doing in New York City, where you can find the areas that they're really concerned about where there's gospel overlap with and get involved in those issues. Uh, that's probably the best way to do it.